Welcome back. I want to talk to you today about a book I just got my hands on. Uh, it's a book called The Christian's Reasonable Service by Wilhelmus Abrockel. And uh, today I want to talk to you about a section I've been reading. Uh, it's a section on the sufferings of Christ. And I want to talk about the sufferings of Christ in a way that helps you perhaps appreciate what Christ underwent for the salvation of sinners more, so appreciate more what Christ has done. And then also perhaps to turn it around and make some sort of practical application about how that, uh, the thought on this may help us uh, come to hate sin more and put it away uh, because we see how uh, destructive uh, sin is. So uh, let's spend a few minutes uh, on this. Uh, Brockle is talking about how Christ suffered and he's, he, one of the things he wants us to see is that Christ suffered in at least two ways. He, he suffered uh, physically and then he suffered in his soul. And, and one way we can think about this, this isn't from Abraco, but just, just from my own way of thinking about it, is to think about a, a mother who gets in a serious car accident. And in this serious car accident, she's in the hospital, let's say for two weeks, just terrible physical pain. And in that same accident, uh, her child died. And, and we might say that that woman is having terrible physical pain. She needs to be in the hospital for two weeks. And yet she also has another sort of pain, the sort of pain that's not physical pain, but a, but a, a different sort of pain that is significant, perhaps more significant even than the physical suffering, that, that loss, that sorrow, that sadness over losing her child. And so uh, in this way, we can think, yes, it's possible to suffer in more ways than merely physical. And when we get to the cross of Christ, we should think, yes, Christ suffered. Uh, he, he was beaten. Uh, the thorns were, were dug into his head. And yet he, he suffered more than merely physically. Uh, he suffered in his soul. And so let's think about ways that uh, Christ suffered in his soul. Uh, one of the things that Rocco wants us to see is that uh, Isaiah 53, which talks about the sufferings of Christ, also speaks about how uh, he will see the travail of his soul and be satisfied. That the, the sufferings of the soul of Christ are connected to our own salvation. And so we do well uh, to think about this. And, and one of the places where uh, Rocco goes is he goes to the, the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus is saying, my soul is sorrowful even unto death. And again, the, the sorrowful soul of Christ here is being emphasized. And what we see is that Christ suffered in many ways. Uh, and one of the ways that he suffers, Rocco says here, is that the Father withdrew all sense of light and favor and fully poured out his wrath upon him. Now again, what does, what does Christ have? Christ prior to this had a significant and abiding sense of the favor of the Father upon him. This was uh, a very important aspect of Christ's own joy. Uh, his joy came from being known and loved by the Father. He knew and loved the Father right back. There was love between Father and Son eternally. And, and now uh, there's a sense in which th that feeling of favor from the Father is beginning to be... Uh, broken a bit. Uh, that's what sin does, by the way. Sin breaks that fellowship uh, between us and the Father. And, and though Jesus had not sinned, uh, he's bearing the sin and then bearing the consequences of sin. And so one of the consequences that Christ had to face was that breaking uh, of fellowship. That fellowship was not as sweet when he's bearing our punishment in our place. The, the, his fellowship with the Father was not as sweet. Uh, and here, here Christ is cut off from the main thing that has given him joy eternally. Uh, and so this is no small thing. And so we just can, want to keep uh, looking at this a little bit more. He says, rather he complained about the withdrawal of all light, love, help, and comfort during the specific moment when his distress was at its highest and when he needed them to the utmost. Again, so not only does Christ lose that sense, okay, well, the Father is, is being favorable towards me, being, uh, being uh, pouring his love, and we're having this great fellowship. Not only does he lose it, he loses it when he most needs it, right? He's going through these sufferings. He's going through this time on the cross of being despised and rejected. And here is where he most needs that, that, that blessing of fellowship with God, and, and this is the exact moment that he doesn't have it. And so this is, uh, again, one of those things that we, helps us appreciate the great sufferings of Christ. This, this 
division, this, this breaking of fellowship uh, with the Father for this, these moments that he is uh, on the cross. Uh, and in, in this, uh, Brockle is saying that he really felt what it would be like to be a sinner. Uh, again, he didn't sin, but he felt what it would be like to be a sinner. And again, sometimes we want to say, oh, yeah, well, I mean, you know, sinners, they, they, they get uh, lashes. Uh, they, they might have to hang on the cross. They might have to bleed. Uh, but no, no, also, uh, they, they have to know what it's like to not have God be for them for their good. Uh, and, and to have the, the blessing of, of God's favor uh, toward them. Uh, he had to suffer that. And that perhaps was, uh, was more significant than the mere physical suffering. The physical suffering uh, was significant. Brockle continues, uh, Christ felt the full force of being separated from God due to sin. Right? He was in a sorrowful condition that when God in indignation fully separates himself from a sinner, withdrawing all favor, grace, and light, forsaking, rejecting, and casting him out. Right? So again, uh, he's just, he continues to, to, to double down on this idea that, uh, cr that what Christ is facing at this time is facing a lack of favor from the Father and perhaps even uh, some of the indignation of the Father. He's going to feel the wrath of God. Uh, but, but part of the wrath of God is uh, this, you won't, the, the only source of good that there is, is God, and, and you're going to be, you're breaking yourself off from that. Uh, you're breaking yourself off from that source of good. Uh, to continue, he says, For a man to have a soul, a soul which cannot satisfy itself and can only be satisfied by something external to itself, and then to have nothing and to be unable to find anything for fulfillment, to miss God, who alone is the satisfaction of a rational creature, and to be empty within while weeping and in total separation from God is both unbearable and intolerable. Here again, Brockle hits on something important. Our souls were made to be most happy in our fellowship with God. So we don't just have souls that could be happy on anything, or that we would be equally happy with different things. Uh, we were made, our souls were made to find its greatest happiness in fellowship with God. And now his soul, uh, Christ's soul, did not have that. Uh, that close fellowship was being affected by the sin that he was bearing. He was bearing the effects of it. And this separation of close fellowship with God is what his soul longed for. He knew what it was like to have it, and he missed it significantly whenever he didn't have it. Uh, and again, this is helpful for us to see the sorts of suffering that Christ underwent. And Brockle goes on to say, okay, after all of this uh, suffering of his soul, we'll add to that the fact that he also suffered physically. And again, that's not a, a small matter. It's a significant matter. Many times, maybe some of the sermons you've heard have talked about the ways that Christ has suffered physically in ways that were uh, uh, designed to maximize physical pain, but we just want to say physical pain was there and this suffering of the soul was there and perhaps even more significant. Now, how does this help us? Well, first it helps us love a Savior who would do all of this suffering so that our sins could be forgiven. But one of the other things that it does is it helps us recognize that when we sin, we cut ourselves off from the joy of fellowship with God. Uh, we recognize that, and, and one of the reasons perhaps that we uh, cut ourselves off from that and we don't think much of it is because we perhaps haven't known the joy of fellowship with God that Jesus knew. Of course, we, we, we really haven't known that. But, but, but as we begin to approach that, as we begin to approach sweet fellowship with God, if we find ourselves being cut off from that, uh, Lord willing, we'll begin to miss that. We'll miss sweet fellowship with God and we'll long for it to be returned. We'll, we'll cry out, uh, my soul will only be satisfied with fellowship with you. And when I sin, I break off that fellowship. And Lord God, I hate that sin. I hate that sin separates uh, my close fellowship with you. I long for that close fellowship. Lord God, help me to hate sin. I do hate sin. I hate the way it separates me and my fellowship with you. I don't want to have that fellowship broken. I want close fellowship. Lord God, help me by your spirit's power. Help me to put sin to death. Help me to not walk in sin anymore because I want this close fellowship. And again, we see because Jesus' sufferings were in part, in large part, uh, not having close fellowship with God, we know to understand that not having fellowship with God is part of God's wrath. And it is something to be avoided at any cost, including us 
uh, putting away all sin so that we might have as close fellowship as we can have right now, this side of glory, and then looking forward to heaven and saying, I cannot wait till I have a glorified body. I cannot wait till sin is completely removed so I have even closer fellowship with uh, God forever. I can't imagine the glories of heaven, but I sure am hungry for them. I sure do want them. Maranatha, even so now, come Lord Jesus.